the C6 HO is uh, it's, it's just one football game way back before the NCAA, and it may have caused the NCAA, by the way. Uh, and, and yet it's a model. It, it's a model that we can do anything, that we're the mighty mouse of higher education, and uh, good things happen from small things. They thought if we can be undefeated and we can beat some of the state universities, some of these universities that are also playing some of the schools in the East, and we can compete on the same level, perhaps somebody like Harvard or Yale or Princeton may take a look. They sort of nationalized a sport that until that time had been so provincial. The East uh, really wanted to hold on to the mantle of being the, the center of, of power of college football. And the Southern schools really were not very well respected by the Eastern schools. And so uh, to have a school from the South, you know, knock off one of the Eastern powers uh, was sort of a, a blow to the prestige of the, of the East. So 1919, the center sprang upon the football world by first beating Indiana and then going over and beating Virginia by the same margin that Harvard had beaten Virginia, but Center played Virginia in Charlottesville and Harvard beat Virginia in Cambridge. So all of a sudden people are beginning to think what's going on down there in the little town of Danville. So to me the prominent story I think here is not so much the upset of Harvard in 1921, but the rise of this small little school basically out of nowhere uh, to national prominence in 1919. 1919 was the very first year that Center really played a major s schedule. And so their very first year as a, as a major power, they, could, they were considered for the national championship. The 1920 game obviously was a dream come true, the game uh, with Harvard, between Harvard and Center, for the Center boys. It's almost supernatural. I mean, how can a little school of 200 people with a football team that a couple of seasons before couldn't even put enough guys on the field to scrimmage, all of a sudden be going to the temple of football to uh, Harvard Stadium on Soldier's Field and play Harvard, but indeed they did. The first time when uh, when Center went to uh, uh, to Cambridge, uh, they lost by I think the score was 31 to uh, 14, something like that. Uh, but but uh, basically the game was very competitive. Uh, for for more than a half, but Center only had 15, 16 players, and, and Harvard had uh, considerably more players, and they were bigger, and, and Center, I think, just finally wore down physically. But uh, they learned a lesson from that, and, and Bo McMillan and the rest of them were not at all convinced that Harvard was a better team than they were, and, and they wanted another chance uh, to prove what they could do. When Bo McMillan stood over in the lobby of Breck Hall, Picture this, picture any college quarterback doing this today who needed money. And Bo said, guys, I got, we got to have a team meeting here. I have been offered a five-year, $50,000 contract to play pro ball. You know I need the money. But I tell you what, I'm coming back next year, and I want to know how many of you guys will come back with me. Because you know what? We can beat Harvard. We can do it. Now, are you with me? Center purposefully played a very conservative game in 1921. They went in at the half extremely pleased that they had a 0-0 score. And so thinking that if they could just score once, they'll win the game. They thought they had the, the team to keep Harvard out of the end zone. So the second half began and Center had the ball on the 32-yard line. Well, they came out the second half, and for reasons I still don't quite understand, Harvard tries a quick kick real early in the, in the third quarter. I guess thinking they're going to catch center by surprise, boot the ball way down the field and back them up. Instead, they only get a short punt. They get a penalty on the play, and center takes over, if I remember correctly, around the 35, 38-yard line of Harvard, 45 seconds into the second half. And now center's got another trick play ready. So Bo had uh, the team line up. And he told Terry Snowday to go down and fake outright or hit outright. And if the Harvard secondary follows him, that's good. He'll take him, take him out of the uh, play, the Harvard secondary. But it, and if they don't, he's, he'll pass to Snowday. It's, a, it's an option play. They roll Bo McMillan 
out to the right, which at that time, in that age, if you rolled right, you went right. That was usually the end of the discussion. Instead, on this time, they were going to roll him right. He was going to stop, act like he was going to throw the ball down the field, and he was going to come back left on a design play. And center did it, played it exactly as they had practiced it so many times. All of a sudden, the center players started chopping down one after another, Harvard man, and Bo was streaking down and he was basically in the clear, but there were two Harvard backs still chasing him. He shifted the ball to his left hand so he could side arm or stiff arm with his right hand. The uh, two Harvard backs, one overshot him, one missed him. Bo then t uh, turned it on. He was literally this close to the sideline. He went the final yards that both Harvard players hit him as he hit the goal line, but his forward motion carried him into the end zone. That was the only score of the game. To me, it's never been about the game. It is a way in which Center College defines itself as being a place that kind of hits above its weight, a, a place where remarkable things occur. But more importantly, it sends a signal to students that I think is much more powerful and important, which is anything is possible.